A great litmus test to see whether a bike is high quality or not is, would you ride that bike if it didn't have any logos on it? Would you still ride that bike if it didn't have a fancy paint job? Because quality is something that is built right into the DNA of things. It's inseparable from the bike, even after it's stripped of its paint and logos and long forgotten up in the rafters of a bike shop. That's exactly what Isaac Rosales realized when he found the high quality fixed gear he was searching for right under his nose, or rather, right over his head. This high quality track lacrosse frame set is unlike anything I've ever seen before. And it seems, Nobody can identify it. All anyone knows is that it's a damn cool bike. Are you a bigger fixed gear hipster than me? Can you identify this bomb-proof mystery track lacrosse frame set? Let's take a closer look in this fixed gear bike check and find out. Speaking of high quality bikes that I would 100% ride even if I didn't have any paint or logos on them, a portion of this video was sponsored by Wobby Cycles. To learn more about the bike that I ride on a daily basis, stick around to the end of the video to learn more about them. Isaac writes, Hey Zach, my name is Isaac and I'm from the northern suburbs of Chicago. I've been working at a bike shop for the last four years. Through forming connections with my co-workers and my local community, and with the perks of being in a bike shop most of my days, I've been able to build this fixed gear bike. From the day I started working, this rusty old frame was hanging up in the rafters. Before I'd noticed that it had horizontal dropouts, a customer was willing to sell off his bottom of the barrel fixie bike that had been in an accident and was damaged. The customer turned down my offer of 200 bucks, but I personally did not recall that the bike was worth that much brand new. Well, it's good to see that even a decade past the fixie craze that fixed gear riders are still absolutely batch delusional about how much their used ass fixed gears are worth. Regardless of what bottom of the barrel cheapo fixie it was, 200 is way too much money, especially since it's used and was in a car accident. He definitely dodged a bullet there. My boss brought down the frame from the rafters as an alternative at no cost. The only issue I faced was I had a bare frame without any other components. But hey dude, a free frame is a free frame, and at the end of it, you'll have probably a much higher quality bike overall than if you had just gotten a stock entry level fixed gear. And you'd also have one that's a lot more personalized that you would probably have more fun riding and owning. This bike was like none I've seen before, but I quickly realized it's not a run of the mill cheapo fixie frame that was stripped of paint. The frame is a steel track lacrosse one. The frame has a formed down tube and curved seat tube, both of which are hard to do by the way, or at the very least, expensive. The frame is TIG welded as well as brazed at the dropouts. Being stripped of paint allowed me to see these details. The frame was heavily rusted, but I controlled the rust using Frame Saver and wiping the frame down with WD-40. The rust damage consists mostly of surface rust that was wiped away to show a nice patina. My co-workers referred to the bike I was bound to build up as Tetanus. This frame is exactly what I mean when I say that good bones are important for a bike. Quality always wins over style. And this frame set actually just gave me a great idea for a quality bike versus stylish bike video. Be sure that you're subscribed to the channel to check that video out next week. According to my YouTube stats, about 58% of you are not subscribed. Come on, just, just hit the button. It's, it's free. What more do you want from me? Those details that you mentioned show that the bike is high quality even long after it's been stripped and forgotten, just waiting to be rediscovered by the right eye when it's just sitting up in the rafters at the bike shop. Fancy logos on a run-of-the-mill bike, I'm not gonna name any names, don't matter when quality shines through the very bones that the bike is built with. Quality never goes out of style. Completely disregarding that it's supposed to be a track lacrosse frame set, I was able to put the frame together with a carbon road fork I had allocated from my sister's road bike. 
uh, sorry. <laughs> the geometry doesn't seem as twitchy as I expected given the shorter rake compared to a track lacrosse fork. It felt natural, and the steel frame paired with the carbon fork gives plenty of vibration absorption from the road. This is a common misconception that I see a lot with fixed gear riders. A lot of fixed gear riders think that having less rake on a fork makes the bike handle twitchier, when actually the opposite is true. A smaller fork rake actually makes the bike handle more stably, whereas as a larger fork rake makes the bike handle twitchier. A lot of fixier riders, I imagine, assume that the opposite is true. I did at one point, and this is my experience, because track bikes tend to have pretty twitchy handling, and they have very small fork rakes of about 28 to 35 mil. But that small fork rake is actually there for the opposite reason. Track bikes have a very steep head tube angle, and to make it ride more stably and more smoothly, they have smaller fork rakes to offset that aggressive head tube angle. I won't explain why exactly that is here in this video, Video because that's an entirely different video in itself. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. But for all three of you super bike nerds out there, here is the twitchiness formula. Just know that your road fork, which probably has less rake than a cyclocross fork, will indeed make the frames that handle more stably. As for the wheel set, I began with some basic loose ball bearing wheels with worn brake tracks that were just lying around the shop. One of my usual customers, who was a teacher, had come in one day and had offered me to sell some Reynolds carbon wheels. She was a nice lady and knowing I was a student, she offered them to me at an affordable cost. I love how saying I'm a student Student as become synonymous with I'm broke. I was a student up until a few years ago and let me tell ya, working and having money to buy nice bike stuff, it's kinda sweet. I was able to rebuild the rear wheel with a DT Swiss hub and left the front wheel but with a bolt-on skewer. It was a good learning experience rebuilding a high-spec wheel like that. And although you're broke and that very nice wheel, by the way, may get damaged or stolen, ain't nobody gonna take that experience and that knowledge away from you. Unless someone hits you with their car. Based on your previous videos regarding the SRAM Omniums, they are stiff, but stiff is good. They balance well with the steel frame, offering great power return. No other bike I've ridden gets off the line at a stoplight quicker. Just make sure that you get either a Chris King or a Phil Wood Omnium bottom bracket down the line, because I don't know how the heck SRAM made their bottom brackets, but it feels like they made their bearings out of broken glass. The handlebar choice of the Originate Mustache style space bars were more fun compared to my previous set of mountain bike wide bars. The big back sweep of the bar along with its semi-wide width is perfect for comfortably cruising around downtown Chicago or taking on 50 plus mile rides. It's such an uncommon bar and I believe it deserves more attention in the fixed gear community. It is the perfect mix between risers and townie bars. We're on the same wavelength because a few years ago on my track lacrosse bike, I rode townie bars on it and all the fixed gear elitists came out of their dingy moldy bike sheds just to make fun of me just because my bike was different and it looked weird to their eyes. But dang it, once you try townie bars, it's just so fun. It gives you so much leverage and control over the bike. They're just so comfortable with that back sweep that it's really difficult not to immediately fall in love with them. I agree with you, hands down. Townie bars, mustache bars included, are the most underrated handlebar type. Or should I say, hands up. As far as the other components go, they are mostly picked from the shop's spare parts bin, as well as components handed down from my fellow co-workers. I ride a brake just to save my investment on wheels. I wouldn't risk being able to skid a stop before approaching a curb or traffic. You see, Isaac, there's your problem. If you were an actual good fixie rider like me, confident in your brakeless riding abilities, that you'd feel just as safe riding without a brake as you would with one. I'm just kidding, but some people are actually like that. I sometimes ride with brakes for the record, and I must say that your brake setup is a really baller one. I know I don't have a perfect aftermarket list of parts, 
having some stock components here and there, but it wasn't the point of the build as I realized that down the road. I use the basic parts I have on the bike because A, they work, and B, patience brings you good things. I absolutely love your mindset. It's so easy to get tunnel visioned on having the sickest bike in town and optimizing our upgrades that oftentimes we forget just to ride our damn bikes and have fun. Now, do you think this super dope limited edition 1 of 50 Alter Chain Ring would look good on my yellow Wobby? Or should I wait for the purple Wobby to come in? I'm not in a rush to fully deck out the bike with all the name componentry. All the parts on this bike felt that they were destined to come together. From almost buying a crappy bike to being able to build this, I won't be greedy. Even though you don't have the flashiest bike out there, the fact that your frame is clearly high quality, yet so indie and underground that even the preeminent fixed gear hipster has never seen it, and let alone is able to identify it, surely gives you plus 30 fixie points for that fact alone. That bike, whatever it is, is a sweet one that anyone should feel proud to ride. And the fact that every part on it is so personal to you and has a story behind it makes it all the sweeter. But if anyone has any ideas or even just knows exactly what this bomb-proof beast is, let us know in the comments. And if you wanna have your bike featured in this weekly bike check series, you can see those instructions in the description. Be sure to read them carefully because about 75% of people who send their bike checks don't, and then we just can't make the bike check because they didn't do it right, just like in life. Do it right, or not at all. Speaking of bikes that are done right, this portion of the video is sponsored by Wobby Cycles. Every one of Wobby's design choices are meticulously made to give the purest ride quality for the money. And Wobby executes those choices perfectly with their bikes handmade by master craftsmen in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado that's eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike you'll love. Wobby's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wobby special, weighing in at a grand total of 17.5 pounds straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a stock bike with completely steel, lugged frame set, and no carbon components. And that weight isn't just for quoting and impressing other cyclists though, it results in the best riding experience that I've ever had with a snappy and lively ride quality that only top tier steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride my Wobby Special as my only bike. If you're looking for a bike that puts an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description, as it really is the closest thing that I've ridden to a perfect bike. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Stan Strong 108, Ryan Witz, Julian Corona, Gio Dezera, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember, life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, even if you don't know what the heck your bike even is.